for the second time this evening. Please welcome back to the stage your host and compare Ryan Gleason. jam on my way to the stage. The lady decided to bend over. She's only human, after all. You okay down there, you all all right? Yeah. Yeah. I, was talk I love you, I was talking to these guys here. Uh, what an interesting way to find out I'm cross-eyed after all this time. You okay? You okay? You from Yorkshire? No, you from Yorkshire? No, you're from Yorkshire, mate, not we! <laughs> hey? Well, that's all I need, just you, like the Fonz of Blackpool. <laughs> if by that I mean you look like you hang around toilets with boys half your age. Um, <laughs> hey, nobody half my age. Nobody's half your age? I'm not sure you understand how age works. <laughs> Am I saying you're not young? Well, no, but it doesn't matter how old you are, there's always at least one person half your age. <laughs> it's kind of how it works. Like, nobody's born more than half your age, ever. That, that's not how it happens. Like, there's nobody in this room now that... How old, how old are you? About 50, if I'm honest with you. Are, are you 50? Right, so do we have anybody in this room who is 25 years old or younger? <laughs> look at that! Look at that! A... You were 200% wrong! In fact, no, you said none. You were infinitely wrong. Bless you. What's your name, by the way, fella? Steve? Stephen or Steve, was it? Stephen. He's, he's repeated the first syllable of what he heard. So what, what's, whereabouts in Yorkshire are you from, mate? Well, they're going to be like, Doncaster, like I should fucking know. <laughs> Where else is there? The rest of fucking Yorkshire. <laughs> all of them, all of the other places. In, how, how sorry are you that you chose him as your partner? <laughs> is this, how long have you two been together, by the way? Is it, is it a long since the first date? Because, I mean, if you're, if you need help, go to the bar and ask for Angela. <laughs> She'll sort this out for you, no. I mean, if you're not sure what that is, it's, like, you've got a Tinder date, or a Grindr date, or whatever, and you think that person you're on that date with is a little bit rapey, right, you, you go to the bar and you ask for Angela, and they'll sort you out, they'll keep you busy and they'll get that other person out of the situation. Unless, of course, Angela works behind that fucking bar. <laughs> And then you just get raped in front of a stranger <laughs> who's wondering why the fuck you brought her in to witness this. Just stood there watching, why have you, I was paid minimum wage, why have you, why have you brought me, I can't unsee this, why am I here? What's going on? It's a great idea in principle, but quite flawed in its design. Like, like, Angela's not a name that you think, oh, who's called Angela? He's like, Ethel, that works. No barmaids these days are called Ethel. Nobody. Ask for Ethel. Go to a bar and ask for Ethel. You're going to get raped, go to a bar and ask for Ethel. Also, if you're a little bit rapey, take your first date on a bar where Angela works. <laughs> Sit for you, I'm equal opportunities. <laughs> we've found the level in the room, haven't we? Great jokes, that's what we want! Don't do plays on words like the first comedian. Tell me about rape, that's what I want to hear about! A man dressed as a Dickensian paedophile talking about rape, that's what we pay for! <laughs> Rusty Gandalf shouting at people! That's what we want! Oh, I bet my mum's going to be proud when this one comes out. <laughs> to the finish, she just keeps having to have a shave and get a proper job. Uh, I am, yeah. yeah. 
fucking amazing me. See what I'm like in bed? <laughs> Think you're laughing now? <laughs> also, very soft on the inner thigh. Um, <laughs> although I'll warn you, it does harvest an aroma. Um, <laughs> Yeah, hair was the line, wasn't it? That was... Yeah, go about right, but oh, feminine hygiene? No! No! That's a medical condition some ladies can't help. Don't laugh at that, Ryan. I was a bit worried before, because I thought that was a, I thought it was a white stick, because it's just reflecting in the light, and I thought that was a white cane, and I thought, who the fuck would sit a blind person on the front row of a comedy club? <laughs> the worst thing you could do, like, if anything, put them in front of a speaker. That's their front row, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not, it's a walking stick. I got it massively wrong. Uh, so you manage down the stairs all right. Your fuck's getting out. There's a fire, though, are you? <laughs> there is a fire. Stay behind her. Um, she makes sure to push her up like a conga. What's your name, by the way? What's your name? Lorraine. Where are you from, Lorraine? I like you. You did that thing. I like the bass. <laughs> You're from Blackpool! Oh, that's why you're dead happy, because it's just nice to be around non smackheads for a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody asked me for a spoon? <laughs> around here, they don't mean a cuddle either, uh, with that. Who are you with, Lorraine? Who are these two? <laughs> I love the way she just went, fuck! <laughs> like, how did, he, how did he know I was here? Who's this? Daughter and boyfriend, how long have you been going in her for, fella? <laughs> Fifteen years? Fifteen years of boyfriend? Fifteen years? Fiance. Ah, oh, right, how long have you been engaged for? Six fucking months! <laughs> Fourteen and a half years and you still haven't pulled your fucking finger out! Why not? Why, why didn't they ask you to marry him? Or did you just keep saying no, not until you sort your fucking hair out? <laughs> Ginger and I'm taking the piss out of somebody's hair. That's that says everything, doesn't it? That. So is that deliberate, fella? Or did you just go through a car wash by accident? A mistake at the start of the Euros. I mean, most people's mistake at the start of the Euros nine months later is a baby. Not. How did you accidentally give yourself highlights? I mean, that's not even something you could just go. Shit! I've blinched my hair. It's like, highlights is a hard thing to accidentally do. And I understood literally nothing came out of your mouth. All I got there was having me, you! <laughs> Just sounded like two fucking bulldogs. <laughs> what, what did you say? How did you accidentally... You woke up first time looking like me. What, into a tweed suit with a massive beard? <laughs> That's, it's got better! Fucking hell! Well, I, uh... And we thought the coronavirus was the worst thing to happen in the last 18 months. <laughs> uh, I'd love to stay up here for ages, but uh, can't be asked. <laughs> so I think it's about time we brought your second act on. You ready for your second act of the evening? <laughs> Good, because it was going to happen anyway. So, you know what to do by now? Three, hang on, what, what's going on here, fella? What, what, where are you off to now? You've only just come back in. Where the fuck's he going? Where are you going? Where are you off to? I'm a wife. I don't know my job. What? I'm a wife. Hang on, everybody else has decided to answer for you for no fucking reason. <laughs> and they're being massively fucking racist. <laughs> so where, where are you going, fella? I'm a wife. I don't know my job, do you? I don't know your job? No, because I didn't ask. <laughs> I don't know where he lives either. Do you all not understand how comedy works? I don't, I'm, I'm not here as some sort of mentalist that understands and reads your book. I'm not Darren fucking Brown. <laughs> Hold up, hold up. I'm a wife! Oh, stop saying I'm a wife, you massive prick! <laughs> Trying to find out where this guy's going. Where are you going? I'm a wife! Where's our doorman? Go and have a word with that knobhead so I can find out what's going on. Right, where, where, are, you, where are you going? What's your, what's your job? You want to tell me your job, so tell me your job. I'm going to get ginger comics. You, 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 you shoot ginger comics? <laughs> I wish you'd have just carried on fucking shouting out, I'm in a wank now. 
Oh, they still gonna walk around. You shoot ginger comics. I mean, I'll be honest with you, fella. If you're gonna shoot me, I'll just stand sideways. You'll never fucking hit that. And I love the fact that you said that's your job. There's only two of us, me and Paul Smith, that's it. Uh, damn it, damn it, I have no idea what the fuck he said, where he's going, but if anybody's missing any ketamine, we know where it's from. I only take coke, sorry. You only take coke, could you take less? Can you? Actually, no, take more. Take all of it right now. And that you, I can see you're filming me. Like, your phone's reflecting everything. Yeah, we're filming it anyway, you don't need to, but what? Where, where are you going now? Where are you going? Get the wine out of there. Well, hurry the fuck up and stop making such a fuss. Well, leave me alone. Well, leave me alone. Uh, uh, stick some consonants in, for fuck's sake. For the walking countdown. Go, we can go in. Nobody wants you here now, anyway. No one's here either. They do, they paid to see me, dickhead. <laughs> oh. Pop me watch off. So my wife stood there trying to get him out and the dolphins just stood over here going, well, I don't know what to do. I'll leave it to the girl with the pink hair, shall I? There we go. The one fucking jump. So at least by chance, I want to sit down and watch this. Let's see how this seems. No, but I'm not sitting over there. But now, well, what's going on now? Where's he going? He's sitting your dad down. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the uh, family secret there, fella. Um, <laughs> right here. <laughs> I've already established I won. <laughs> now, as I was doing about five minutes ago, just trying to bring on the second act. For some reason, those com combats never get asked to do an encore, but I just fucking did. <laughs> so let's bring on the second act. You know what to do. Three are on your hands, four are on your faces, five. Please welcome to the stage your second act for the evening, Sandor. Ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three. and warming of the oceans and will eventually misplace around 1.4 billion people who live on densely populated coastal areas, could trigger in a migrant crisis the likes of which this world has never seen. But, on the other hand, I bought a calippo today. <laughs> it's a lovely 21 degrees here in Blackpool, so fuck you, Bangladesh! <laughs> We're going to have a lovely time. It's a little bit weird coming back after so long away. Why are you still shouting anyway? What's happening? <laughs> It's all right, we'll carry on once you've finished saying the occasional word. We'll try again. How are you? Are you all right? Yeah. You remembered how to behave? Yeah. Excellent, good. We're going to have fun. It is a little odd coming back to stand up because I've been away for the full 18 months. I've, don't worry, I've warmed up a bit, it'll be all right. But it's odd because it's coming back on stage and trying to find out if the public still want to listen to you. It's like, it's like how I imagine Prince Andrew must have felt after his dad died. <laughs> Mother, I don't need your input. Shut the fuck up, mate. <laughs> mother, mother, can I do interviews again? Am I forgiven? <laughs> no, get back in your box, you sweatless nonce. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a proper 
I joke that one, don't worry, it's just a statement of fact and I look forward to hearing from his lawyers. <laughs> It's been a strange old time though. I really didn't mind, I didn't mind the fact that people were a bit more miserable and a bit anxious about lockdown. I thought that was all right. I think as a country, we did a pretty good job of looking after each other. What I didn't like over the whole last uh, 18 months was all the toxic positivity you got from some people on Facebook. People that thought, oh, lockdown's an opportunity. You've got to treat it as such, and if you don't, you've wasted the chance. What have you done with your time off, hey? Me? Hmm, I've taught myself Spanish. Now I can hand weave baskets, and I can hand roll sushi. What have you done with the time, Sam? What have you done with the time? What have I done with the time? I've rewatched all eight seasons of Desperate Housewives and nearly, <laughs> and nearly ripped the head off it. That's what I've done. <laughs> I've turned what was previously quite latent anxiety into full-blown mental illness. That's what I've done. <laughs> Can't even take the bins out without three pro panel anymore. <laughs> it's not just my mental health either. My physical health has gone to shit. Genuinely has. They reckon the average person has put on six pounds over lockdown. I am definitely better than average. <laughs> I'm at that age now, I'm 35 years old, my body's falling to shit a bit, and I thought I'd definitely put some weight on after lockdown. So what I'd do, I'd figure out my exact BMI to figure out what I need to do to get back to the proper weight. And it was quite nice, actually. I'd never properly measured myself before. I hadn't done it for years. I'd always believed I was six foot tall. <laughs> properly measured myself. Turns out I'm actually six foot two. So that was nice. And I weighed myself for the first time in years. And it turns out those two inches are a stone each. <laughs> unfortunate and my wife as well my wife has started jogging and she absolutely does not need to lose any weight so i know it's a fucking hit <laughs> she comes back in and i'm sweating that one things like to enjoy it now yeah i feel like i feel like we do it together it could be quite a nice thing i'm just sit there eating a tray of dollar and going, just call me fat you fucking coward <laughs> But it's odd though, it was such a weird time, because obviously, you know, I do this, I'm a stand-up comic. I was one of those people who was eligible for the self-employed grant, but I didn't want to be a person sitting at home just claiming free money from the government. I wanted to contribute a bit more than that. Okay. I wanted to be a proper citizen, so I went back into work and uh, also claimed all the free money from the government. Because <laughs> I'm not a fucking mug, am I? <laughs> I did what I used to do before. I went and worked with children with special needs and challenging behaviours because in lockdown I felt like they were having a good time. It wasn't, it wasn't they were having a bad time either. It wasn't out of any sense of moral imperative. I just wanted that blue lanyard so I could get to Aldi at half nine on a Sunday. I miss Aldi at half nine on a Sunday. I really do. It was beautiful. It was so peaceful. And if the aisles ever did get clogged with old people, all you had to do was cough and they would just move. We can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. We are off the rules now. We are off the rules and we are on to Great British Personal Responsibility. <laughs> as advocated by Boris Johnson. The man who wants you to do the things that he can't tell you to do anymore because he no longer wants to tell you to do them. I'm not going to tell you to wear a mask anymore, but you probably should. You probably should. You probably should wear a mask. Yeah? But you should probably wear a condom when you fuck your secretary. <laughs> But there's a reason why you don't, and it just feels nicer. <laughs> Much like those people who don't wear masks, they should, but they just don't care about what they sneeze into other people's holes. <laughs> I know I'm, uh, I'm sometimes a bit alone and not particularly lucky for a job. I don't, like, I don't think anybody can be that posh and that rich and then go to the G7 summit and talk about inequality. It just rings a bit fucking weird with me. It's a bit like the country has gone to a meeting of Narcoleptics Anonymous only to find out that the guest speaker is Bill Cosby. <laughs> I don't trust your expertise on this subject, sir. You have not proven yourself trustworthy. <laughs> Well, I'll talk to you about it, Sam. I'm 35 years old. Genuinely, the only reason I exist at all is that I am one of four children. Uh, my mother just only ever wanted one daughter. She just kept trying until she finally had one. And it was just quite funny for my two brothers and I to realise around Beth's seventh birthday when her personality started coming out. The blesser, what my mum's womb had actually produced, was just boy, 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 fucking massive lesbian. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It was just quite funny to realise that the three of us had left so much testosterone in that womb that nothing straight was ever going to survive. <laughs> so my mother, bless her, had spent her entire life waiting for the Christmas morning when she could unwrap the precious Barbie she'd always wanted. And which one did she get? Oh, it's the big hands Barbie that comes with a power drill. <laughs> But I'm proud of my sister, I'm very proud of her. She's always known exactly who she was. She's always been militant as well. Uh, my mother always said, by the way, my sister's a little bit younger than us. Uh, that was what happened there, is that my mum got to around the age of 42 and thought she'd get away with it. No, nope, you win a baby. <laughs> but, you know, she's a little bit younger. She's up that age now. And she's always thought, like, she's always been proud of being a lesbian. 
My mum always said that the three boys is the worst possible combination of children to have, and that my little brother always spent most of his early days with his face buried in the carpet by one of us. So we must have set the right example because my sister <laughs> spent her adult life doing exactly that. <laughs> She knows exactly who she is. She'll tell anybody who'll listen that she's a lesbian. She's not a fucking idiot. She didn't tell my nana. She wanted her inheritance. <laughs> God bless you, Jean. You're a heart of a good woman, but that bungalow was paid for a life of sin you would not have approved of. But she hasn't fucking out over my sister. She is a prolific lesbian. Honestly, that girl has chewed through more rugs than a family of moths living in a DFS. <laughs> I think more people should be like her. It's the 21st century. Sexuality doesn't have to be a binary thing. It doesn't have to be black or white. We're allowed now, I think, to accept that at some point in our lives, we might just find ourselves physically attracted to people we might not have expected ourselves to be physically attracted to. And it's fine to embrace that. Basically, all I'm getting at here is I don't know if anyone, I see a younger man in this audience, will ever get the opportunity at the age of 20, when off your tits on MDMA at a house party, to receive a blowjob from a very skilled and enthusiastic gay man who insists that it will be fine. <laughs> but I'm telling you now, you absolutely should. I mean, don't get me wrong, it might confuse you for a good few years, but there will come a point in your life when you are, let's just say, purely hypothetically, 35. <laughs> when you will be able to look back on it and appreciate it purely as the technical masterpiece that it absolutely was. <laughs> And it really was perfect dismount, correct amount of twist on the stuff, and exactly, exactly the correct amount of teeth. Which, by the way, ladies, is fucking none. <laughs> You're eating a fruit, not a corn on the cob. Come on. You always get one woman as well who is just, oh no, I know they will say they don't mind teeth, but me, I know what I'm doing. I just use it. No, none ever. We don't do it to you. We don't grate our teeth against your clit like we're trying to get barnacles up a speedboat. That's not. Don't do it. Never said that before out loud in my life, haven't I? I might keep it. <laughs> that's a true story, genuinely. I have, a, I have, a, I have done that. I've dabbled in my life. What happened there is that I went to university and it just so happened that all of my friends, some of my best friends to this day, at that time of my life, were just gay men that I happened to live with. I went out with them all the time. Great people. Just got to the point where I was getting propositioned so much that I started thinking, you know what? I'm almost certain this isn't my kitchen, but fuck it, if you're cooking, I'll eat it. <laughs> and eventually, it was happening so often, it was just rude not to bring dessert. <laughs> it doesn't threaten my sense of self at all, I know exactly who I am. I'm a 35-year-old straight man who happens to be bisexual on a technicality. <laughs> that technicality being that once at the age of 20, I bombed a man so hard he cried and then thanked me. <laughs> it's lovely to see you again, by the way, sir. <laughs> Normally, I recognise that haircut from the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't come out public with that haircut and don't get rinsed. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> like I said, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a I'm carry on. Sorry, that mouse is going to have a sexual identity crisis. We'll work around it, it's fine. I'm 35 years old, genuinely. Uh, I'm married now. I'm married to a woman. Yep, that's interesting. I, uh, <laughs> genuinely, we got married back at the start of July in that little gap where we were meant to unlock but never actually did. Which was, you know, on paper for her was a tragedy. For me, it was brilliant because it meant that I got to uninvite about 30 clumps that I didn't want to pay for. It was a lovely time. And we're at that age now. I'm 35 years old. I always wanted to get married, right? I'm at the right age now. I've settled down. I've sold my wild oats, all four of them. <laughs> and I'm at the point now where I was willing to get married. Some of my mates, they did it too young, they panicked about it. I remember years and years ago, my best mate Mike, right from university, he, was a, he got married when he was 21 years old. And the reason he did that, he got his girlfriend pregnant, and he moved in with her, and he proposed. And the technical term for that, by the way, is a Catholic panic. <laughs> But he knew he couldn't drink and take drugs the way that he wanted to the moment this baby came along. He needed to be an adult, and he thought the loophole that he cleverly figured out would be to do all of it in one big binge in the nine months while Hannah was still pregnant. And me, being the good friend that I am, was available to go and do this with him, and I saw things I did not want to see, right? Now, Mike lived at the time in Bradford, which already is a terrible start to any story. <laughs> but this pub he dragged me to was a restaurant used by kids during the day, and at night, like all the locals would go there to get proper leathers. Because it was a restaurant used by kids, in the bathroom, it was just after they'd come out, one of the geniuses had decided to fit the brand new Dyson Airblade slightly lower down so the kids could reach it. I don't know if you heard that, that was the sound of one or two people getting slightly ahead of me on this one. 
it is not a design idea I've seen in any other pub in the country, and there is a very good reason for that. Because that fateful night about 10 years ago, I witnessed a very tall, very drunk man at 3 a.m. mistake the child's Dyson Airblade for the urinal. <laughs> it was horrendous. It was like being trapped in a thunderstorm that tasted of asparagus. <laughs> And this poor bloke, right, he was so hammered, he didn't even recognise the fact he was pissing into what is basically a high-speed handmade. He carried on doing it. There were three other people in this toilet, me included. We're now diving for cover like it's Black Hawk Down or something. One guy decides he's going to be the hero of the situation, thinks to himself, right, all I need to do is sneak up on that guy and turn him slightly so that he's weeing on the floor and not into the Dyson. That was a nice idea. But he didn't think to explain that plan to...